verses 16 to 18. That he was made a minister by a divine authority, that the same Jesus that appeared to him in that glorious light ordered him to go and preach the gospel to the Gentiles, he did not run without sending, nor was he sent by men like himself, but by him whom the Father sent. What is said of his being an apostle is here joined immediately to that which was said to him by the way. That it was spoken to him afterwards, but he puts the two together for brevity's sake, rise, and stand upon thy feet. Those whom Christ, by the light of his gospel, casts down in humiliation for sin, shall find that it is in order to their rising and standing upon their feet, in spiritual grace, strength, and comfort. If Christ has torn, it is that he may heal if he has cast down, it is that he may raise up. Rise then, and shake thyself from the dust, ISA 52 2, help thyself, and Christ shall help thee. He must stand up, for Christ shall help thee. He must stand up, for Christ has work for him to do has an errand, and a very great errand, to send him upon, I have appeared to thee to make thee a minister. Christ has the making of his own ministers, they have both their qualifications and their commissions from him. Paul thanks Christ Jesus who put him into the ministry. Christ appeared to him to make him a minister. One way or other, Christ will manifest himself to all those whom he makes his ministers, for how can those preach him who do not know him? And how can those know him to whom he does not by his spirit make himself known? Observe. The office to which Paul is appointed, he is made a minister, to attend on Christ, and act for him, as a witness to give evidence in his cause, and attest the truth of his doctrine. He must testify the gospel of the grace of God, Christ appeared to him that he might appear for Christ before men. The matter of Paul's testimony, he must give an account to the world. Of the things which he had seen, now at this time, must tell people of Christ's manifesting himself to him by the way, and what he said to him. He saw these things that he might publish them, and he did take all occasions to publish them, as here, and before. Of those things in which he would appear to him. Christ now settled a correspondence with Paul, which he designed afterwards to keep up, and only told him now that he should hear further from him. Paul at first had but confused notions of the gospel, till Christ appeared to him and gave him fuller instructions. The gospel he preached he received from Christ immediately, Galen 1.12, but he received it gradually, some at one time and some at another, as there was occasion. Christ often appeared to Paul, oftener, it is likely, than is recorded, and still taught him, that he might still teach the people knowledge. The spiritual protection he was taken under, while he was thus employed as Christ's witness, all the powers of darkness could not prevail against him till he had finished his testimony, v. 17 delivering thee from the people of the Jews and from the Gentiles. Note, Christ's witnesses are under his special care, and, though they may fall into the hands of the enemies, yet he will take care to deliver them out of their hands, and he knows how to do it. Christ had shown Paul at this time what great things he must suffer, ch 916, and yet tells him here he will deliver him from the people. Note, Great sufferings are reconcilable to the promise of the deliverance of God's people, for it is not promised that they shall be kept from trouble, but kept through it, and sometimes God delivers them into the hands of their persecutors that he may have the honor of delivering them out of their hands. The special commission given him to go among the Gentiles, and the errand upon which he is sent to them, it was some years after Paul's conversion before he was sent to the Gentiles, or, for aught that appears, knew anything of his being designed for that purpose, cch 2221, but at length he is ordered to steer his course that way. There is great work to be done among the Gentiles, and Paul must be instrumental in doing it. Two things must be done, which their case calls for the doing of. A world that sits in darkness must be enlightened, those must be brought to know the things that belong to their everlasting peace who are yet ignorant of them, to know God as their end and Christ as their way, who as yet know nothing of either. He is sent to open their eyes, and to turn them from darkness to light. His preaching shall not only make known to them those things which they had not before heard of, but shall be the vehicle of that divine grace and power by which their understandings shall be enlightened to receive those things, and bid them welcome. 
Thus he shall open their eyes, which before were shut against the light, and they shall be willing to understand themselves, their own case and interest. Christ opens the heart by opening the eyes, does not lead men blindfold, but gives them to see their own way. He is sent not only to open their eyes for the present, but to keep them open, to turn them from darkness to light, that is, from following false and blind guides, their oracles, divinations, and superstitious usages, received by tradition from their fathers, and the corrupt notions and ideas they had of their gods, to follow a divine revelation of unquestionable certainty and truth. This was turning them from darkness to light, from the ways of darkness to those on which the light shines. The great design of the gospel is to instruct the ignorant, and to rectify the mistakes of those who are in error, that things may be set and seen in a true light. A world that lies in wickedness, in the wicked one, must be sanctified and reformed, it is not enough for them to have their eyes opened, they must have their hearts renewed, not enough to be turned from darkness to light, but they must be turned from the power of Satan unto God, which will follow of course, for Satan rules by the power of darkness, and God by the convincing evidence of light. Sinners are under the power of Satan, idolaters were so in a special manner, they paid their homage to devils. All sinners are under the influence of his temptations, yield themselves captives to him, are at his beck, converting grace turns them from under the dominion of Satan, and brings them into subjection to God, to conform to the rules of his word and comply with the dictates and directions of his spirit, translates them out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. When gracious dispositions are strong in the soul, as corrupt and sinful dispositions had been, it is then turned from the power of Satan unto God. There is a great happiness designed for the Gentiles by this work that they may receive forgiveness of sins, and inheritance among those who are sanctified, they are turned from the darkness of sin to the light of holiness, from the slavery of Satan to the service of God, not that God may be a gainer by them, but that they may be gainers by him. That they may be restored to his favor, which by sin they have forfeited and thrown themselves out of, that they may receive forgiveness of sins. They are delivered from the dominion of sin, that they may be saved from that death which is the wages of sin. Not that they may merit forgiveness as a debt of reward, but that they may receive it as a free gift, that they may be qualified to receive the comfort of it. They are persuaded to lay down their arms, and return to their allegiance, that they may have the benefit of the act of indemnity, and may plead it in arrest of the judgment to be given against them that they may be happy in the fruition of him, not only that they may have their sins pardoned, but that they may have an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith that is in me. Note, first, heaven is an inheritance, it descends to all the children of God, for, if children, then heirs. That they may have, Cleron a lot, so it might be read, alluding to the inheritances of Canaan, which were appointed by lot, and that also is the act of God the disposal thereof is of the Lord. That they may have a right, so some read it, not by merit, but purely by grace. Secondly, all that are effectually turned from sin to God are not only pardoned, but preferred have not only their attainder reversed, but a patent of honor given to them, and a grant of a rich inheritance. And the forgiveness of sins makes way for this inheritance, by taking that out of the way which alone hindered. Thirdly, all that shall be saved hereafter are sanctified now, those that have the heavenly inheritance must have it in this way, they must be prepared and made meet for it. None can be happy that are not holy, nor shall any be saints in heaven that are not first saints on earth. Fourthly, we need no more to make us happy than to have our lot among those that are sanctified, to fare as they fare, this is having our lot among the chosen, for they are chosen to salvation through sanctification. Those who are sanctified shall be glorified. Let us therefore now cast in our lot among them, by coming into the communion of saints, and be willing to take our lot with them, and share with them in their afflictions, which, how grievous soever, our lot with them in the inheritance will abundantly make amends for. Fifthly, we are sanctified and saved by faith in Christ. Some refer it to the word next before, sanctified by faith, for faith purifies the heart, and applies to the soul those precious promises, and subjects the soul to the influence of that grace, by which we partake of a divine nature. 
Others refer it to the receiving of both pardon and the inheritance, it is by faith accepting the grant, it comes all to one, for it is by faith that we are justified, sanctified, and glorified. By faith, teeism that faith which is in me, it is emphatically expressed. That faith which not only receives divine revelation in general, but which in a particular manner fastens upon Jesus Christ and his mediation, by which we rely upon Christ as the Lord our righteousness, and resign ourselves to him as the Lord our ruler. This is that by which we receive the remission of sins, the gift of the Holy Ghost, and eternal life. That he had discharged his ministry, pursuant to his commission, by divine aid, and under divine direction and protection. God, who called him to be an apostle, owned him in his apostolical work, and carried him on in it with enlargement and success.